Oh man, this thing's cranking. Vintage Philco 46 1226. What do you call this? Like a tombstone or a headstone radio? Maybe a uh, older console radio record player. Yes, it has a turntable in it. And friend that saves old stuff does hauling and cleanup of estates or whatever he found this he was gonna take it to savers because no one would buy it he put it on Facebook marketplace he put it on Instagram no one was interested in it so I said you know please don't take it to savers let me at least get a video on it um, maybe hopefully someone watching this video is would be willing to pick it up in the Los Angeles area although I've kind of lost hope in that because that never seems to happen so I don't know maybe I'll end up giving it to, to savers too Jeez, is that supposed to be bent like that did it come with a, a fire extinguisher mount in 1946 Wow, it's actually an automatic turntable? That's not supposed to be bent like that, is it? I don't know. I am not a record player aficionado. Automatic manual. Cannot tell. It has a needle on it. Anyway, um, standard AM broadcast, and it's got looks like it's got shortwave 9.3 to 15.5 megahertz. Condition is fair. Actually, the condition for one of these is something from 1946. This is probably about a 6 out of 10. Let's see what we've got here. Power transformer set. I love these fancy hinges. Look at these fancy hinges. We got here some kind of gimmicky rotating antenna. Is that what is that what this is supposed to be? Yeah, that goes in there. Some type of gimmicky rotating antenna. I mean, it doesn't rotate. It doesn't even rotate 90 degrees, does it? quite know what the point of that is uh, so let's see what we got here Philco model 46 1226 code 122 it's like it's got a bunch of Loctals in it has some 6k sixes or just one 6k six no it's got two 6k sixes
It's in pretty good shape, actually. Can't get over this. So we got a bunch of, wonder what was plugged in there. Doesn't look like anything. So this is antenna. Model 461226. Filled with these lovely Loctal tubes that I love so much. Absolute junk. So we're going to try and resurrect and get the radio part going here. Turntable, probably not. This looks up to snuff. We'll just strip that off and stick those wires right in the line cord. Let's see what kind of... Uh, oh, look at this. We got one hole in the speaker. It does have a field coil on it. It's not a permanent magnet speaker. This must be... up under here. It's actually got a fan on that motor. So what is the point of this? Oh yeah. Jeez, you could hurt somebody with that stylus. Go ahead and get your jab on. This is interesting. Mayflower 17. So is this like a moving tag? At some point in its history, somebody used Mayflower uh, transportation to move their house. I wonder where this originally came from. That's interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, let's let's dim bulb it and power it up slow and see what happens. It's actually a, a decent piece. I mean, it's, we, we lost a knob, but these are just plastic knobs or Bakelite. There's nothing special about that. Yeah, hopefully someone adopts this. Because this is not bad. This would be a good resurrection, full restoration project for somebody. I'm going to resurrect it. I want to try and listen to uh, AM radio on it. Okay, let me show you how to do this. So you get your strippers and you just strip the wire off, right? And then what you do is you stick the wires in here like this. Okay. And then you don't want them to come out because that would be unsafe. So what you do is you get just a regular like cheater cord and then you just ram it down in here like this. Just to hold your, your wires in there so that way you're safe. Because we wouldn't want to do anything that could be perceived as unsafe on the internet. Because it might get censored. Okay, uh, 60 watt bulb, that should limit us to a half an amp. Uh, power has been applied. If we have any short circuits in the... If we have any short circuits in the um, power cord here, it'll just light up the light bulb. We're limited to, what, a half an amp. Here we go. That was good. It just barely lit up. Phono. Uh, broadcast. 
Looks like that says broadcast. Dial tuning. Okay, that looks like that works. Volume. Absolutely barely anything. I mean it is it is it is hot. I can feel it. It is hot to the touch. Wow, we don't even have filaments on anybody here. We don't have filaments, we don't have dial lights. I wonder if this is a bad power transformer. Wouldn't that be an interesting failure? I wonder... Ooh, that's interesting. If I put that on phono, the light comes on real bright here. See that? Uh, let me see. Okay, if I turn that on. So that's our motor. Which is trying to move. It's not frozen. Interesting, it's trying to move. Uh, let's go up to a bigger bulb. It's a 150 watt three-way. Speaking of three-way, weird I turn the motor and it feels like turning a, a, a capacitor motor that has a bad capacitor you feel it you feel it like humming and trying to turn but I don't know very weird very weird this thing right here is I think it's Dude is getting a little bit old. So, this is a weird video. It's very odd. So, when we're in phono, it gives the it gives the the record player power, but the motor won't run. And when we're in broadcast or shortwave, there is some current draw, however, it's very low. Or I should probably say there is some power consumption, but it's very low. And we're not getting any filaments here at all. Well, maybe I take that back. This is semi-warm. Okay, I gotta take that all back. But this is cool. This is the rectifier. This is cold. That's warm. That's warm. That's cold. I think it's time for the thermal imaging camera. Yeah, so this is not really ideal. Uh, but obviously we got the rectifier is cold. Those are warm. 
uh, all of these are warm so yeah it looks like just the rectifier is cold of course that's the rectifier right there so a lot of times these will act as a fuse and it actually looks like let me clean this off but it actually looks like this thing is melted in half internally and it actually looks like that's precisely what happened the look at the plates are completely melted they're through there's holes melted through them I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before So I'm trying to find a place with adequate lighting to show you the destruction here. This must have been spectacular. Look at that. The plate is actually completely melted away. See what that looks like? It's supposed to look like this right here. So this, yeah, this is, re this is what you call red plating. This had to be... This had to look awesome when this happened. I can't believe it didn't melt the glass envelope. That is incredible. So how does this happen? Uh, you have a shorted capacitor or something shorted and it just causes the tube to self-destruct. The tube acts as a fuse, but this would be an awfully slow blow fuse for that. Look at it, it actually puddled the steel. That's incredible. Boy, it only takes something very simple to impress me these days. So I wonder if 5Y3 and 5U4 are the same. You can go with a solid state 5U4 and then blow the power transformer apart. Nah, we, we got a short somewhere, dead shorted filter capacitor or something that would cause this. So here's 5Y3, uh, here's 5U4, so they look like the same thing, see that, same thing. So uh, 5U4, I have 5U4 silicon replacements I've made. Okay, so here's a silicon diode replacement you can make. So this, I made this for 5U4, I guess this will work for 5Y3. So I'm going to start by going back to the smaller light bulb. Because we know what's going to happen. It's, it's just going to light the light bulb up full brightness, right? Um, so here you go, we ready? light bulb oh yeah is it slowly getting dimmer it looks like it I think we got dead shorted capacitors in here without a doubt I think that thing wants something to eat. I'm going to let it sit for a minute. The light bulb is slowly getting dimmer and we have a slight hum from the speaker. Uh, you're not going to be able to hear that. But we have no crackle. Crackle at all here. Do we think Japan and... Uh, do we think Japan is still on... 12 megahertz? I wonder in 1946 if people would have been interested in seeing... Japan on their radio. That's something to think about. Nothing. I'm going to go to the bigger light bulb. 
I really don't suspect we could damage that power transformer very What the frickin' internet tells you to do? Comprende? Okay, so this small capacitor here is getting very, very hot. Very hot. <laughs> like, like uncomfortably hot. So this is interesting. You can, you can see that the, looks like the 6, K6 on the right is definitely hotter and then that capacitor right there, look at that, 158 degrees. What is this tube? This tube is 128. This tube is 105. That's interesting. We got something going on there for sure. This other capacitor here, 98 degrees. Let's see, is the field coil is not getting hot. I guess I should be using the phone to record and not like doing it all cheesy like this. So this will give you an idea where the heat is. This tube is definitely hotter than this one and that is correct. This one here is hotter than this one and this capacitor back here is super hot. Wow, that sucker is going to vent. If I let it go, it'll burst. It'll vent. Because, I mean, it is, it, it literally is that hot. Instant, in, in, instant cream. So, without a doubt, and I know it's dark out here, but this small capacitor is, wow, is that hot. What I'm interested in is this dude right here. What's up with you, homie? You okay? Huh? He's old and bony. He's been around here for a long time. Not really, really very good at mouse patrol anymore. Kind of retired from that job. God, I want to say he's been out here... 12 years, maybe 15. I think he's, uh, I think he needs to be recapped. So actually a correction, it looks like this thing is 47 or 48. And, uh, of course, so here's your rectifier. And this uses kind of a floating ground setup to get a negative bias voltage for the output tubes. So this 20 microfarad here, that's probably the small one that's getting so hot um, because it's not connected to ground. This 25 right here, that's probably the bigger one that's a multi-section. A lot of probabilities here. But also we have a takeoff voltage here through a 15K. We have 300 volt B plus through a 15K. And then we have a 10 microfarad here. Oh, 185 volts. So this supplies your IF and your oscillator and all that. So if this was shorted and dropping the voltage off through that 15K, it might explain why we have no uh, you know no uh, sound at all so this is the front end right here it's interesting how some of these say um, silver mica capacitor let me see if I can find that right here silver mica it's kind of interesting so it looks pretty simple, but that doesn't mean it's going to be easy to resurrect. Of course, there's our detector diode. Um, we probably have one of these 006s that are leaky, causing the one tube to get hot. 
you know so it only looks like we have three electrolytics here now there is a SAMS on this I might pull the SAMS if I have it it's in folder 15 so kind of rationalizing this it would have to be this one that was shorted this this has to be because the field coil was not getting hot and 650 ohms would not it wouldn't be able to flow enough current through that to, to melt this rectifier down so this one has to be shorted now what I'm thinking about doing is I'm, I'm thinking about just changing all of them with just some used random capacitors that I have around here off of a board the thing is I don't want to put any money into this because no one will buy it uh, no one will adopt this stuff not in my backyard people just won't have it so I mean that's kind of the sad truth I I want to resurrect it for the challenge and the video and to have fun and see it work again but it's not worth like doing a full recap and trust me this thing would need a full recap to be anywhere close to reliable like all of this like this 0 0.1 0 0.01 these things are probably paper and they'll just start to short after a little while it might run for a couple hours then these things are going to just start like this one right here they're going to just start shorting that's what they do they just the, the paper and foil it just burns through and they short out they internally carbon track and short okay I got the chassis out and I think this tube is getting super hot and this capacitor is getting super hot and this is a capacitor that's isolated from the chassis on that Bakelite board look at this it's the original Philco capacitor and this was tucked up under oh, it's sitting right about here you can see so I'm curious to see what this is about because it was clearly um, stuck up in there under the chassis. Let's see. Come along on a wax-tastic voyage. Lots of leaky wax paper capacitors. Look at this. But the good thing is we only really have three electrolytics, so and we just want to resurrect this sucker. Well that's a beautiful brass tuning. Well let's see what we got here. I have not Omaha, December nineteenth, nineteen fifty five. What was the postage on this in 1955? It looks like that's missing. So let's see. If you're not interested in this part, just skip over it. Oh, we have some type of communication in here. Merry Christmas. Friendly and good wishes for the new year. Interesting. Was not done on a home printer in 1955 and does not contain a photograph of the current family. Let's see here. Okay, we have this format of data. Well, being that I question the official narrative and talking points uh, and have been probably correctly labeled American Taliban in the past week or so. 
Uh, that's the new designation for anyone that questions what they tell you. I should be able to decipher this cryptic uh, font or handwritten script. So let me find a tripod. Like I said, skip over this part. Uh, it's, it's not really directly related to the radio, but it's interesting to find this inside. Omaha, Nebraska, December 19th, 1955. Dear Barbara and family, haven't heard from you in a long time. Hope you are all doing okay. Next Sunday will be Christmas. Seemed like it came in a hurry. I went to downtown Omaha shopping yesterday and got most of what most of it finished. <clears throat> Pete is to get back from Indiana, a job near Chicago, Tuesday evening. We have a nice layer of snow on the ground. Hope it lasts for Christmas or that we get more. Minus a storm, that is. Haven't had enough this year for the kids to build a snowman, though. Notice, though, is not spelled T-H-O. It's T-H-O-U-G-H. I don't, I don't suppose you have snow, do you? Question mark. How far are the mountains from you? Question mark. How is your mother? Question mark. I haven't seen her for a long time. The folks were up here the, the week before Thanksgiving. They came after Barbara, who has spent her two weeks, two weeks vacation with me. She works for the county assessor at the Franklin Courthouse. Is Nillis out for the service yet? Is Nillis out for the service yet? Howard is at home. Elva lives. At Fullerton, California now. I wonder if that's where this radio came from. Orange County. We have received one nice Christmas present, a $5 bonus check from Pete's boss. Oh, $5, huh? Guess I told you we have a farm out by Riverton now. Didn't I, question mark? The reason why I'm saying question mark is I'm trying to highlight that obviously this person starting off with haven't heard from you for a long time hope you're doing okay is is like trying to encourage this person whoever this is supposed to be reading this um, to re respond back to them our children are fine excepting Neil who has a cold Larry was one year old in September quite a big boy now, or anyhow he thinks he's as big as the other two. Wishing each of you a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Love, Larsh Parnorflarsher Darj Farvel Flusher. Talk about a waste of data. Anyhow, that's how people communicated in 1955 through this type of innocent crap. Back to our radio. You know, it's just interesting because the odds are that whoever wrote this and whoever read this are long gone, expired, decayed, consumed by the bacteria and turned back into carbon.
from which they were made. So somebody filled me in on this capacitor wizard that this could be a counterfeit, that there's like a Chinese counterfeit that looks almost absolutely identical to the, uh, I guess the original cap wizard. Speaking of China, I just read an article that the the Taliban's main working partner is going to be China. So China runs off with all the minerals, all the mineral wealth in the earth in Afghanistan, and we get nothing. We're just giving this place away. Look at that. That capacitor is totally dead. Let's check this one here. There's only three sections. That section is absolutely dead. We know they're like resistors though, and that section is, let's think about 40 ohms. So all three of these are completely dead. Now there's, this is a 20, this is a 20 and 10 microfarad at four, I think 400 volts. Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull these out, put these in there. Just some scrap parts boards I got. Uh, remember, the objective here is just to make it work. I'm not trying to restore it. Now, I am sort of familiar with this chassis or the AM FM version of this chassis, and I can tell you exactly what will happen. We'll get it working, and then slowly, it might be one minute, it might be 10 hours, it might be 100 hours these wax capacitors will all start to short and when I say short I mean go to zero ohms and start smoking the resistor or whatever they're getting power through so um, let's do the electrolytics and see if we could get this to work alright pretty sloppy huh but you know what you can't lose with 22's since our field coil is missing, I have 560 ohm speaker. I'm using this driver right here. Uh, let's see what they call the field coil. They call the field coil a 650 ohm. Okay, here goes. We're going to do some voltage checks here. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I have my doubts. Okay, this tube is still... I have this thing powered up and I've been kind of just checking voltages. and They're all there and they look okay. This tube is still getting much hotter than this one and checking the the bias this resistor here should give you a negative voltage uh, on the control grids through this these 330 K resistors and uh, it sort of is but these capacitors are so leaky and I mean you could see this one looks like it's getting hot and melting um, we have activity here. I'm trying to trace through the schematic and see. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking, that's the tone control I was just touching there. Um, I'm looking for what am I looking for? I don't know. What is the point of this 67C6? So I'm looking for the volume control. That's through this. Let me look at this. Okay, I stand corrected. This is the volume control. And yes, it is working all the way back to here. That's just, you're touching it, your tone. 
So the audio amp is working. Why is it so dead? I'm gonna, I want to use a lot of my cleaner on this because it's a resurrection, but I'm going to give it a little squirt spritzer here. Nice old wafer switch. And then we will clinko twinkulate. And this thing is so damn stiff. Okay. I hate these damn tubes could be the whole problem right here is this freaking thing is not making Let me spray this thing listen I hear stations. First sign of life. Off the westbound side, right around Crenshaw. We've got it south on the 57 of the Temple. We've got a new right here. That looks like you first smashed it. Down to right out of Brea as you make your way into Diamond Bar. And we've got a new problem reported on the 101 downtown LA. We're still on reduced voltage through the light bulb. Week we could bring back some of the moisture and the humidity. More news to come. It's 3:57. One of the things we've learned this uh, last year and a half: the importance of clean air, how to make sure it's filtered, and airflow, ventilation, all of that. There's everything out there that you do not uh, want to be breathing in. Viruses, bacteria, smoke, smells, traffic pollution. And you can take care of all that with IQ Air. I'm talking about these guys because they've been at the top ranked around the world. Designed in Switzerland, made in Germany, and they got tech that others don't. They've got their Hyper HEPA filtration. Every day when I walk in here, I've got the Autumn Series from IQ Air sitting on my desk. This is their personal air purifier, so you can take it to where you work or are spending more time. Then you know the air you're breathing right there for you is safe. with somebody from the team and that way you find out the perfect fit for you iqair.com slash us slash experience center that's swear to get this iqair.com slash us slash experience center a showcase for clean air so go and try it out in fact oh. bridge core bba cash call mortgage in mls I think we had something short. Something shorting, see that? How about a cash out refi with an interest rate and APR in the twos? Cash call more. Something starts shorting, see that? Somebody's not happy on her. Is it this one? Well, that, that killed it. See that? That's probably one of these paper capacitors shorting. It dead now. Me murder. Okay, this is weird. It's almost like both tubes went bad. Or maybe the one on the right was bad the whole time because it wasn't getting warm and the one on the left was kind of still working. But I got uh, negative voltage there on the control grid. I have on the screen 
I have 318 volts on the plate. I have 318 volts. It's just like both of these tubes died. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this cut these capacitors out of here because they're leaky. And then I'm going to put a capacitor in series with those and try some new tubes. Yeah, this damn thing. It's just completely shorted inside now. And sometimes you can clear the shorts out, but this thing. Oh, and I put two disc capacitors in there. I just put them in series. Let's see. Weird. Okay, here, here's a 6K6. So I'm going to say that this is the one that was hot. That one was working the whole time. This one was dead open. So this is a substitute. All of our DC voltages look good or decent. So, I mean, we got negative three volts on the control grid and that's that'll go up. As it should, as it draws more current. But where's our volume? What's up with this thing? There's a little buzz there, but not much. Okay, what the hell is going on? Is this too bad too? Because when I turn it up, that voltage is supposed to go negative on the control grid because the cathodes on these tubes is directly grounded. So it uses this resistor and a floating ground to create a negative bias voltage that comes in. And when I bypass this, in Irvine, about to get street smart to improve safety and traffic flow. Next generation sensors. That's what it should does. Now it starts going the other way. See that? Scott Samuelson tells KNX it's for their three year study to help make driving smoother and safer. Communicate with connected automobiles to release the them of an incident that they may need to. And now it's going to start to go positive. See that? Now it's positive. Is that another bad tube? Okay, here's another 6K6. See what this one does. No extra charge for singing. Thank you, but people need to understand that we can take old photos, VHS tapes, even film, and transfer them wow. to DVD, film drive, or a digital download. Our trained technicians digitize everything by hand right here in the U.S. Don't worry, I'll cover all that. Legacy Box, Legacy Box, the best way to digitize home movies and photos so that they are bought. Wow, that thing really draws a lot of current. Okay, I'm supposed to have 225 here. I have 332. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of this solid state rectifier. It's too efficient. It's it's causing the B plus to go up way too high. Okay, let's do a little experiment. We're supposed to have 300 volts on that point right there 
And this is a 5R4 rectifier, and I have 364. With the solid state diodes, it's 416 over 100 volts high. With a 5U4, it's 375, 75 volts high. With a 5Y3, the appropriate tube, it's 347, which is 47 volts high. Well, there's K Mozart. With only this for an antenna. So it's working good. But our B plus is still high. B plus is still high and that's without the field coil, but it'll it'll still be high with because I'm before the field coil. That sounds like silver mica disease, except this doesn't have silver, well, it does have some silver mica capacitors in it, but it doesn't have silver mica IF transformers. Could be a paper capacitor getting ready to short. We just let this run, a paper capacitor will short, no doubt. It's almost like it's in a tube. What happens when you get a microphonic mixer oscillator tube? I hate these Loctals. is this thing? Do I have one of these? What is this tube? Seven H seven. So let me explain how I came to that conclusion by with the light bulb that it was a tube and not a capacitor or something else. So when I do this,
it lowers the va it lowers the voltage to the set, right? So the filaments drop, the B plus drops, everything drops. When I turn this to bypass, I go to full voltage. Now before, when I did that, there was no static for a minute, and then the static started. And the reason why, as soon as you flip this up, the B plus goes up, but the filaments are still warming up. So the delay in the static coming in was due to the tube having to reheat up. This, this thing is really bad. I think I think this is the same tube as 7H7. Let me try and rototwebulate here. I hate these damn tubes. Okay, I switched them around. Now I got nothing. Dead. Maybe the problem is in the socket. I cleaned it. What more can I do? So this is the first IF. This is the second IF. This tube is still microphonic and staticky. It's just you don't have the amplification of this of this tube amplifying the static of the one in front of it. Does that make sense? When the noisy tube is over here, then this tube is amplifying the noise. But if you listen, it's still there. This is what the tubes look like at night through night vision. I was gonna see if I could see the arcing and there it finally just started it again. So I'm gonna see if I can see that with this. Because a lot of times this thing will... I don't know if it's the tube sockets or not. So this is not heat, this is light signature. Maybe I should look at it with uh, thermal. So with the night vision, you can actually see that the audio output tube on the right is slightly red plating. See that? See the other one on the left here is not red in the middle? or there's no light in the middle this one here slightly red plating and that's because this thing will bring both ultraviolet and infrared into the visible spectrum you can't see it there 
but you sure can see it with this thing. The one on the right is super hot. Yeah, that's very clear. That's the one on the left. That's the one on the right. Yeah, I don't know. The static is like totally stopped. I was hoping I could see some arcing somewhere, but it's kind of uncomfortable having that tube run that hot. I'd rather not damage uh, sacrifice any tubes for this radio since this is just a resurrection. I think we're solid. We're probably going to put it back together tomorrow and scan the band and then ship it. Okay, so let's see if we can see where the big girl's at here. That's the rectifier. <laughs> suckers are hot Well, there's really nothing hot in here except those are all tube sockets that are hot. So, I don't see any issues here. That, of course, right there is the dropping resistor. The 15K dropping resistor. And these are just all tube sockets that are hot. Back to the static issue. I had initially said, wow, that sounds like silver mica disease, which is where these cans have these kind of built-in silver wafer capacitors in the base of them and what happens is over time they start the silver starts to oxidize and they make poor connection and they arc and all kinds of stuff and that's why I was looking for arcing with the night vision but I quickly said these don't have built-in capacitors well that was wrong that was an incorrect statement there's a tunable capacitor there. The rest of these are all tunable slugs. And I'll show you on the schematic where they do have built-in mica wafer capacitors. So, I mean, this tube socket is really bad. That's undeniable. Um, you know, you just barely move this. And I tried cleaning it. I even tried a welding tip cleaner to clean the pins. And the... The pins are just all opened up, so they're not making good contact, but that's common with these Loctal craps. So if we take a look at the schematic, we can see that it does have built-in capacitors. Right here is a 470 picofarad. Now there's a tunable capacitor. Right here is a 250 picofarad. And then right here is a tunable capacitor. And right here is a tunable coil. So here's another mica capacitor right here, I guess, 003. So could we take this apart and replace these capacitors easily since they're labeled as to what they are on the schematic? I'm assuming these are mica wafers. I could be wrong. Maybe they're uh, mica dominoes. But anyway, the noise seems to be coming from right here this area because when I pull this tube out it goes away completely that's why I thought it was this tube socket I also thought it was a tube arcing internally or failing internally because of the delay that seemed to occur when you powered it down and powered it up it seemed like the only thing that would really change is the filament and tube continuing to get hot but I guess one of these could could break down after it's turned on for a while and then the interesting thing is I came back 
two or three hours later and I couldn't get it to hardly static. So, yeah, I'm going to say it's one of these. I mean, you never really know until you fix it with an issue like this, but I'm, I'm done. I, I, I'm done trying to fix this thing. He still has a hell of an appetite for that processed meat animal byproduct corn infused genetically modified loaf. Chassis is back in. Guess I should double check. I got the speaker hooked up. I got the antenna hooked up to where it was. I'm not sure if that's right. Uh, I think this is power for the gramophone signal from the gramophone. I guess we could see if the cartridge has any activity. Um, yeah. You know, there's a reason why I'm not replacing this lovely line cord and um, redoing the rest of it because I am going to put the put the tubes back in and I wrote bad on all of these and what I'll do is I'll write a note with everything that I found wrong with it and I'll leave it in here hey maybe in 80 years somebody will find it maybe by that time we'll be speaking a different language in this country and they'll have to use some kind of electronic device to translate English we'll start out through the light bulb just to make sure that Nothing shorted or got damaged when I reinstalled the chassis, and it looks good. Transformer. See if this motor runs with full power. Because remember, when we started, we were trying to run it through the light bulb. Nope. The motor spins free. Well, let's see if there's any... Oh, wow. That thing's alive. you got to be kidding me. No way. Oh, we have to get this to run. Why will that motor not spin? What the hell? Why would a shaded, just a shaded pole motor not run? Oh, hey, I pulled a Jason JJ Cruz. The fan blade is spinning free on the... The thing is frozen. There we go. I felt the fan spinning and... The fan was spinning free on the shaft. Listen to that smooth, quiet operation. It's got some torque, man. Boy, this is exciting. I 
I don't know what these do and I don't care if I know. I need to get a 78. Listen to that clean metallic sound. Let me clean. Shaky, shaky. Let's see, how about if we lubricate this motor a little bit with some WD-40. Oh yeah, spray the freaking camera. Just in case. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Right in my face. Okay, so you know what, according to Radio TV Phono Nut, this, um, Slows doesn't give you an accurate thing because oh man this thing's cranking 80 rpm is this only is this 78 only I guess maybe it is duh did they have anything except 78s in 1948 or 1947? Duh. Well, that slows it down. Jungle Drums. Guy Lombardo on Decca. Try a few seconds of this. God, that's hideous. Oh, yeah. Wait a second, so mind blown. Okay, mind blown. I am, I don't know what kind of pickup that is. Thank uh you. -huh.
Damn, that has dynamic range. I'm impressed. I am, I am more than impressed. What year is this? Do we have a year? Interesting, I don't see a year. Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians. You know, I purchased a CT100 that belonged to Guy Lombardo. There's a video on it on this channel. And an RCA serviceman got it from Guy Lombardo, and I sold it. Because I saw a CT100 as a bad investment because it had a good CRT and it was just waiting to go to air. Vocal group with orchestra. Now I guarantee you this Capitol Records this will be in the Anything, anything on these major record labels, um, go, uh, Google will get. Now, I have a feeling it's not going to get the Decca record. This video sure took a weird turn. Patty Page, Mr. in Mississippi. So for science, you know, science is a big thing that we talk about now. And this, for science, I'm going to just record this whole thing. This is the jungle drums. And I could swear that in the background in this, I hear the, uh, the like, Afro-Cuban 4-4 bell, bell pattern. So listen, I might just record the whole thing, skip over it if you don't like, and then we'll get into the radio.
I like it. I like it. I'm impressed. Mind blown. Lawyers in many ways. Uh, is a strength unto them, and he is a saving and there's a lot of them at the last hour of their need officer for the county registrar recorder county clerk now to find a vote center it's easy just go online to lavote.net and here's a reminder that all votes abuse evaluation our finances first time in u.s history that a murder suspect would claim demonic possession as a insured and we'll take care of all of the heavy lifting don't learn a career of financial education 21 must scan amp method purchase edition I don't know if it would do short way. Let's see. So WWCR would be on 10 megahertz. You know, this would probably be such a hot, awesome working radio if it was aligned and There it is. How's that?
that is that's an HID light starting up. Sideband. All right, let's see if it'll get 660 KTN in. Perhaps a defense. And you can unite. Find a way to help others with the help of others. Until it's not, find out how you can strengthen the character of your right. Good law. And the second baseman is... And to the phone and inspired civilians. Look at them in their time of need and you can do that. Miss <laughs> Now, with more severe ones, the assumption is the line has got to figure out something to protect. Anyway, uh, I think this has gone on long enough. You know, this could be one hell of a radio if you wanted to spend the time to restore it, and I mean that seriously. All the fundamentals are there, it just needs a restoration, it needs TLC and you know, full recap, full alignment, tube socket replaced. Silver mica disease presumably repaired. Uh, record player cleaned and lubricated. I mean, this thing is, it's all here. Like, it's 